are you serious? Are you serious? Well, folks, you can't help but be concerned about what's going on after in the aftermath of this Iranian nuke deal. Of course, we know uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu of Israel did a live uh, telecast on the internet trying his best to convince the American public to please put pressure on their Congress to convince them not to ratify this agreement. But Iran is moving on. They've celebrated. They've The money's starting to flow. Uh, they're ready. They've never even been inspected yet by anybody because we have to give them a 24-day notice. I think we just now told them we're going to give them the notice in a couple weeks. Then they get 24 more days. So Iran's planning now to do a missile test to flaunt the defiance of the Vienna nuclear deal. Shortly before the United States Secretary of State John F. Kerry was due in Qatar this week, uh, Iran's highest authorities, led by Supreme Leader the Ayatollah Ali Khomeini, uh, launched a public campaign to support Iran's non-compliance with the Vienna Nuclear Accord. They're already saying how they're not going to keep the deal. Um, and UN Secretary Council Resolution 2231 of July 20th on its ballistic missile program. The campaign was designed by a team from Clamoni, uh, Ayatollah Khomeini's office. High-ranking Ayatollahs and the top uh, echelon of the Revolutionary Guard, including the Chief General Ali Jafari. Now, it was kicked off with a batch of petitions fired off by the students of the nine uh, Iranian universities and Qom religious uh, seminaries to Iran's Chief of Staff, General Major General Hassam Fiza. Fizuzabali, and I'm not going to say that twice, uh, demanding immediate test of long-range ballistic missiles to prove that the missile ban was invalid. So in other words, even though the agreement, the Iranian nuke deal, says that Iran cannot be testing ballistic missiles, Iran is going to test ballistic missiles. And and they're also broke uh the Ayatollah Ali Khomeini put out a brand new book called Palestine, in which he speaks of a one-state solution in the Middle East, and that is take the entire country from Israel, run the Jews out of the Middle East, and call it Palestine. Also in the book, he calls America the great Satan and speaks of Israel as a cancerous tumor that must be annihilated. So they're going to, he writes a book with all of that hate, slanderous attacks, and they are going to fire off their ballistic missiles. They're celebrating in the streets, and yet nobody, the Obama administration still says that this is a good deal, great deal. And the Congress are still wrangling with John F. Kerry in some kind of hearings, at Senate hearings, on why or whether or not this deal should be ratified. And, uh, folks, this is insane. But this is the kind of defiant stance that Iran, and Iran can do all this kind of stuff. As long as they can do anything they want and still get to have their $100 billion dollars, and still get to build their nuclear capabilities, and still get to call us the great Satan, and still talk of annihilation, and keep preaching this radical Islamic eschatology of their radical Islamic theology, then, you know, this, this whole thing is a sham, a disgrace, and biblical prophecy, because the Persian Empire is part of this great Battle of Gog and Magog, spoken of by the prophet Ezekiel in chapter 38. Because Iran and Russia and Turkey and Libya and Ethiopia, which basically will make up the Sudan as well, will all participate 
in, in a major attack on Israel. Israel will win because of the power of God. Something biblical is going on here. Something's wrong with this picture, but on the world stage, the evil continues to surface before our very eyes. I am literally just, you know, I'm just the messenger sharing with you the facts that biblical prophecy is coming together like a hand in a glove. And Jesus Christ will come for his bride. Ready or not, he is coming. Are you saved? Jesus is the way. Call on him as your savior.